All right. Hello, everyone. I'm here with uh, Vicente, and we're going to speak today about pod security standards. Vicente, hello. Hello, Nathan. Thanks for having me here. Well, uh, I am Vicente. I am a, a cloud native security consultant at Control Plane. We work with uh, security for Kubernetes, cloud. So the reason uh, I am here with you is to talk about more security standards. That is this new thing that has been a long time as a beta feature in Kubernetes, but people don't know much about. They know there is there. There's no something's going to happen. But... Okay, there used to be this thing called pod security policies or PSPs. And then they got replaced by PSSs. So what's the difference? PSPs were very convoluted, very verbose. They could mutate things. So PSPs were like this big complex mechanism where you could build your own security policy and do whatever you want and like put together all these Legos. Mm -hmm. Essentially, they said, you know, you don't really want a Lego. You just like, you want a house, right? And then PSSs just gives you the house. Yes, that's more, that's more or less the idea. The problem with PSP is that it gives you a lot of power, but also you can make things strong and can give you a false sense of security. You think you are covering a lot of things, but it's like a house where you have windows, doors, and then you are closing everything with a lock, but then you are leaving the main door open because you didn't realize there was an extra door in the house. So PSS is going to solve that for you. Like you don't have to know a lot about security to be able to use it. You just want to say, okay, I want things open, close, or completely close. And that's you that's have like a, three a, options you choose from. You say with a PSS yeah. option one, like secure, super secure, or just like not so secure. Yeah. And then that's the idea. Okay. So what do I need to know about PSSs? Well, PSSs uh, uh security standards define three levels of security, and those are privilege, baseline, and restricted. Uh, for privilege, everything is allowed. Is not using PSS at all, so it's like a non-existent level. For baseline, it's a level that is moderately secure, where your bots shouldn't use host path, shouldn't uh, try to use host port, uh, you shouldn't be requesting special privileges, but you are allowing other things, and that's where restricted level comes. With restricted, uh, everything should be tied down. You should drop all capabilities. You should. Uh, you should not allow privilege escalation for your your container process to gain more privilege that it already has. Uh, you should uh, also um, define a second profile to make sure that the, your pod is running with a set of uh, kernel syscalls that has been defined for the cluster as secure. So it may it may sound a little scary, but as I say, it's just three levels, very easy to use. You just have to know which one. You, you assign to your namespaces and also how to make your pods more secure so they can get into a, a more secure level if they if you're not using the insecure features that so you just apply a label on a namespace and that way automatically that admission controller will block pods that are not compliant with the PSS level that you are trying to enforce in the in the namespace, be it baseline or restricted. Oh, so that's really cool. So like I, I'm using my cluster now. I say, okay, I want to make my cluster more secure. All I have to do is I add an annotation to the namespace. I say this namespace should be like mm -hmm. base, have baseline security. And now that's enforced that I can't have anything that's doing anything too weird in there. Yeah. Okay, very cool. But if I understand correctly, there's one problem with PSSs, right? There's like one almost well, big thing they forgot yeah. about that causes some issues. And you wrote a tool to fix that. Is that right? Yes, that's right. The problem is that obviously at some point things will start being blocked, that is what you want, things to be blocked. But when you don't know too much about what you're doing, things may be blocking and you don't realize why. And, and the big problem is that a mission controller, as any other mission controller, is checking for pods and compliance with pods. But when you work with Kubernetes, you usually are defining deployments, demon set, Chrome jobs, jobs, other kinds of objects. You are putting them in Helm charts. You are not defining directly a pod manifest. So when you deploy all those things in Kubernetes, uh, the admission control is not going to complain. It's going to accept everything you are deploying. It's going to say your deployment has been created successfully. But the bots will never start because you forgot that you have to assign a second profile or you have to set, uh, you know, uh, run as not root on your containers or little things like that for the PSS level that you you want to run. And, and, and the problem you is I like searching logs. 
Yeah. I went to my cluster. I said, I'm going to make this namespace secure. This is now a baseline namespace that has certain security standards automatically applied. And then you go and you run kubectl apply, you roll out a deployment. And really, this should be blocked because that deployment is going to create pods. Yep. That are but instead, I succeed in creating the deployment because the deployment itself is fine. It's the pods inside that deployment are bad. Yeah. So you start getting errors in some random place, but I won't even see them. And the pods are just stuck. Is yeah. that right? Well, that's right. But the thing is that uh, should the deployment be blocked at all? If you look at the security definition of what should be a PSS level, we are forbidding some pods because the pods are insecure by themselves. They are the ones that are doing bad things. Deployments are creating pods, but the deployment is doing nothing bad in itself. The pods are. So that's why pods are allowed, but I mean, deployments are allowed, but the pods is creating not. And that's where it's where you all came, comes into the picture, right? Yes, yes. And that's why the tool we have built comes in place because it's an static analyzer for those deployment daemon sets, jobs, Chrome jobs, stateful sets, replica sets. And it will intelligently take the pod manifest definition from those objects and apply the pod security standard rules to check if they are compliant or not, and telling you so before you deploy anything. And even individually telling you check by check which parts of the manifest are not compliant and why. So it's- Okay, it's okay, hang on. We're gonna, do, we're gonna do another video just on this tool. Yes. So check that out. <laughs> um, and we'll probably have them up at the same time. And um, thank you all for listening. And let's now record that next video. Thank you, thank you. See you in the next video. Bye.